Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time I got a Keithley Instruments model 610 solid state electrometer. Well, it's a real fancy pansy name, I know that, but what, what this can do is volts, as you can see here. It can do current. It can. Uh, I think this is um, to add uh, energy like that, but it, I'll never use that. And then we've got ohms, and there is a multiply here. So this is the, is, there is that little X, I don't know if you can see this down here. So so this is the multiplier, I guess. So you, you go in all those ranges here, and then you can use the multiplier on top. Oh, let me zoom in like that. So try and imagine all the ranges and then multiply by 1, 3, 10, 30 or 100 or divide by a factor of a thousand, right? And then you go in volt and then there are no other settings here but only the multiplier. So that, that is what I want to try with first. Volt, 1, and then it should be fairly easy to figure out if this works or not. It is um, full of uh, field effect transistors and all that kind of stuff. So this is a hefty, hefty, uh, low leakage stuff. I look so much forward to show you guys what is uh, inside. Um, there is a, a very funny feature here, this zero check. That is actually a very special switch you can push. Every time you push this, you short circuit the input so there is a mechanical switch in here where well, you can also push and dial like this now the input is kept short and then you can play around with the zero uh, there's also a switch on the back there's also a zero switch so we've got both switches like this and then a part meter and of course you can measure uh, volts that's positive or negative and or you can center zero. How about that? Then you use the scale down here, right? Yeah, positive, negative, or well, the meter is off, but the unit is on, so that the, this is only the meter. That's because there are um, outputs on the back. Yeah, let's uh, let's show the back. So here we go. This is the the back. We have got one output here, and we got another output here. And we can select between uh, one milliamp or three volt, and we got a milliamp uh, calibration here. But we also got a coarse zero here, so there's also a switch here. And all of this is actually explained a little bit in brief here. Um, so this is for a uh, recorder, or this is for some other instruments and and uh, whatnot, and. Uh, yeah, let's now it's open anyway, so I might as well just show you what is inside this unit. See, oh, that is a fantastic input attenuator. Maybe I should try and go closer here. So look at the input like that way. It's difficult. Let me show you. This switch is one of a kind with Teflon and all the nicest. Let me, if I dial this around here. I really like that design. So there's so much into low leakage of the input signal that goes to Teflon here and it goes through all the different um resistors and all that kind of stuff here we got that will be the input board and amplifiers even that pot meter here for zeroing is also absolutely fantastic made zeroing the multiplier 
So this is the right side of the instrument. This is the, the meter switch, which also contains the power on off. So here we go with the power on off in a fully shielded switch. And the power cable here is of course also shielded. And you can hear this switch is here. Then it works and then all the other settings, it's not working. It's because this little mechanical thing that points out here, it hits the switch and then it just goes past the engagement of the switch. So that is really well made multi-mode switch. And of course, the main transformer is far away from all the input stuff that is output amplifier and all that the more high voltage stuff all this nano pico nothing environment is down here so okay of course you can shield but what really work is distance and that is of course why you have all this air up here that is because distance that is what really really works so this is why this instrument is this big actually to give you all this distance that is needed to provide a super nice and clean and yeah so this is the the switch the zero switch i was talking about see there isn't anything up here and then a metal plate and that is the the input that comes from the input attenuator and all that kind of stuff it goes via that Teflon isolated wire and then it goes into the first stages of the amplifiers and again see Teflon and then this is the input kill switch more or less right so you, you bend it like this <laughs> It is just fantastic the way that they made all that. And here on this, the first um, input board or the first stage, again, field effect transistors and, and thermal coupled transistors for DC balance. And it's actually possible to lift out this board and uh, do service on it. But I, I actually don't want to do that. I want to try and uh, power this up and see if it uh, it works. The, the power supply is, by the way, what you see right here. It's just rectifiers and uh, capacitors and the uh, signal diodes. That's all the all there is to it. They don't need to regulate anything because everything here is completely perfectly balanced. So, so you don't need a more accurate or more regulated power supply than that. <laughs> I kind of like that. So let's try the first power on. Mains is applied and nothing bad happened. And I try and... Okay, we've got a lamp and five watts of power usage and the input connector is a uh, PL259 so I need to add my little adapter like this of course you can do this in many ways right and I got uh, 100 millivolts coming in here and we see nothing oh it's because I'm in meter off meter positive hey let's try and turn off Ooh, yo 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 what is that so we've got some leakage and this is obviously because we are not in zero right so what if i take the my input and short my input yeah then it goes it is that crazy high this input impedance but i will go and play a little bit with the zeroing and hopefully get this uh up and running so i think i was able to figure this out 
So all this zeroing and stuff is uh, absolutely crazy. Um, see, if I remove the input like this, see the needle goes negative. Just by pushing this, I can make it go anything. And that's because the input impedance is so high, the tiny, tiny little capacitances and stuff you got anywhere and just for from static charges of just the wires and stuff it, it makes the needle stay like that it is actually moving slowly like that but it is that crazy this meter so now i connect my 100 millivolts like that and it shows the exact reading like that right so this is one volt so this is 100 millivolts so let me try and give it 200 and three four five so all that works and let's try and go fast Oi. how is that there's two how is how is it doing that? So there's something wrong with feedback in fast. And I got 500 millivolts. Let me go back to 100 millivolt. Okay, that is weird. Let me short my input. Then it goes, okay. Maybe I need to clean that switch, but that is a problem found so far, <laughs> okay. And this is 10 volts, and now I am in 10 times the multiplier. And that seems to be very, very accurate now in uh, the 10 volt range. See, that is seven, six. All right, so all there is to it is just to try the different ranges. So we are now in 30 volts, should be there. Okay, so I should dial this up to 10, and that is 10. So that will be 20. Yes, that works too. Oops. And then we can, of course, continue and so forth. So that is 100 and that is 30. Okay, so I believe more or less voltages works. I'll go and see if I can find some amps and some ohms and stuff like that. So now I'm playing with current measurement. And here's a quite important to understand what it say down here. It says 3x max in the those three settings, right? I took the the highest that is 10 minus 1, and that means of course 0 0.1 amp full range, and I am in times one. So that means um this is 40 milliamps. Right? So, of course, if I add a factor of 3, that means 300 milliamps is now my, my full range. And that is, of course, my maximum. If I go here, it would have been 1 amp, 3 amp, 10 amp. Of course, you're going to blow this up, right? <clears throat> So let's try and play with some of the more finer, finer aims here. Let's see what we can do. So that was 40 uh, milliamps. Let's go down to 10. So that means 10 is full. Oops, that is me. So now I'm playing a little bit more with the more Fine, fine. Well, I don't know. <laughs> there are quite a lot of uh, ranges left, but here is uh, 10 microamps full range. 
and I got one mega ohm in series with the input. So that means uh, one volt should be here, right? One volt and uh, one mega ohm. So let me crank it up to 10, 10 volts. As we're almost there, right? Almost at 10 microamps. It's 10% too little. And uh, so, so all the ranges from here and up, they're quite all right. But if I go, okay, let's go down to one volt again. So that is one volt, should be one microamp. Oops, problemo. What if I go here? Oops, that is weird, right? And I can continue, continue. Okay, let's let's go back to so you see the the problem. This is ten. Uh, I mean, this is one microamp full range, and I got exactly one microamp going through this one, right? So let's give it a half of a microamp. Now it's easier to see what's going on here. And I can continue, and I can continue, and I can continue all the way down to nothing. And uh, so there's definitely something wrong uh, in this unit. So there's uh, this is not, not something I can do anything about, really. This has something to do with leakage in field effect transistors or some super crazy stuff that I don't really want to bother with. But let's play a little bit with volts again. Uh, that was a half a volt, right? See, I am in times one and I am in volts and I got one mega ohms resistor in series with my half a volt and that is perfectly fine. So let me crank it up to one volt again and we're all the way here, right? So that is one mega ohm. But what if I change this Resistor. What if I go a factor of a thousand up? What do you think is going to happen? So isn't this funny? See? This is one giga ohm. And I still got one volt. And you, I can still go down to a half a volt. And it's exactly the same. So now you understand the input <laughs> impedance of this meter, right? Oy, 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 that is crazy. I don't think I can find any resistors higher than one giga ohm. So I can't really prove what's going to happen. <laughs> what do I need to get you a visual? You can see what happens here. I can do the hocus pocus, especially if I go near this one. So this is the, the capacity. If I just move slower, nothing's going to happen, right? But if I move, move fast, you see, this is the charge that is coupled to my fingers. Isn't that a little bit crazy? And if I go closer, yeah, I raise the voltage. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Just a very short, uh, I don't, I'm not going to go through all the ranges in ohms as well. But this is, of course, one mega ohm full range. And I got my one mega ohm here, so it's shorted, and then it goes zero ohms, and then I go here, and then it should be one mega ohm like that, right? So I believe this works in ohms as well. So this is 10 mega ohms full range, and of course, I got my one mega ohm here. Of course, we could definitely try and see if we could measure the one giga ohm resistor. And let me show you this again. So that was one mega ohm full range, right? One mega ohm, 10 mega ohm, 100 mega ohm, and one giga ohm full range. And then it craps all out like that. So the idea is you check zero. So there's definitely some leakage here that uh, is also revealed in ohms, and it's also revealed in the microamp, sub microamp uh, ranges. So yes, uh, something uh, needs to be fixed here. So there's only one little clip left. 
and I took off the bottom plate and then all sorts of corrosion so this unit was stored somewhere too wet look at that so all that corrosion of course you can't see anything on this PCB but that is not the same as there's not any kind of tiny tiny little rust particles or stuff like that there's just a little bit conductive destroying this instrument's behavior and why is that a problem yeah see now we are in voltage mode let's have a look did i put it in voltage mode yes i did so in voltage mode we can see the switch is connected to that pin and that pin is not connected to anything at all right so that means in voltage mode um the input amplifier is just its own ultra high impedance so let's take the next round that one is the highest sensitivity in current right and that is now connected to this resistor and this resistor is a hundred giga ohms okay 100 giga ohms this one the next step is 10,000 mega ohms so that is 10 giga ohms and then it's one giga ohm and so forth so that is just the current sense resistors isn't that a little bit crazy to imagine here so this is why you can't touch anything with your fingers you everything needs to be super super degreased it needs to be so clean it is impossible to to understand i guess oh also i don't know if this is an error this is the grounding metal that you bend out to ground and the input goes via a one mega ohm resistor to the grounding and then you short this see this one is not soldered is that on purpose is there a good contact here maybe that explains what happened when i pushed this switch a few times and i got all sorts of funny readings just because of the capacitor i create from this pad or this piece of metal to that piece of metal when this is pushed in and out just this piece of metal and when you move it towards something you generate voltage it is that crazy the way that this amplifier works i think they actually cascaded those two field effect transistors here and then there's a feedback to this one so so you're going to get a insane high uh, input impedance I, i'm actually not able to measure this uh, because i don't have any ultra ultra higher uh, resistors I, I could of course borrow this one that could be cool but i don't want to touch it at all so yeah, that is what I wanted to show you guys uh, about this very, very fantastic instrument. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. And I wish you the best of luck. Please come again tomorrow for more funny stuff.